Hello everyone, my name is Li Sisi. I'm coming from Beijing University of Post and Telecommunications. Our work is Commutativity Guaranteed Docker Image Reconstruction Towards Effective Layer Sharing. I would like to begin with the background. Containers have emerged and revolutionized how web applications are deployed. They can be flexibly deployed on the specific node through delivering images. Therefore, the images grow rapidly with the development of containers. For example, Docker Hub stores more than 2 million public images occupying roughly one petabyte storage. Due to the ubiquitous mobile device, the dynamic requests lead to the frequent service deployment and migration. Google stores average 7,000 containers per second to support continuously changing requests. Developing containers, growing images, and dynamic service. These factors lead to the huge pressure on storage and network of container images. So how to relieve the burden of storage and network? The scheme currently used in Docker is content addressable storage. It can save both storage and network consumption. Specifically, it allows to share identical layers among different images at the local storage. When an image is requested, the Docker daemon would check the local storage to identify whether each layer exists. Then only the layers not at local are downloaded from the registry. Does the content addressable storage work well? We evaluate this scheme with the image net. We pull 2,200 images among the most popular 130 repositories from Docker Hub and then extract them the metadata of these images. As shown in the figure, content addressable storage contributes to 44% layer decline and around 38% storage saving. The saving gets larger with the increase of images. Different layers cannot be shared through CAS, but they have many redundant files. We present the comparison of unique layers and unique files to reveal this redundancy. Around 55% of files are deprecated, and 35% storage can be saved if we can only store these unique files. The redundancy also gets larger with the increase of images. In summary, layer sharing enables partial file reuse, while it cannot eliminate all the file redundancy. The potential of layer sharing remains to be explored. We describe the level of file redundancy with layer similarity. We leverage the JCard index and the duplication ratio to quantify the similarity of layers at the file granularity. The larger the metric, the more duplicated files in the layers. We first try to figure out how many layers are similar. We compute the similarity of each layer pair. The cumulative distribution of the JCard index is shown in the figure. Not all layers have identical files, but partial layer pairs have high JCard index, which means they have lots of identical files. We also notice that the average JCard index of layer pair within the repository is higher than across the repository. Therefore, we wonder how much similar is the layer to other layers within repositories and across repositories. With the layer being fixed, we figure out its maximum and average metrics with other layers within the repository and across repositories. The result is present as follows. The curves of intra-repository layers are below the curve of inter-repository layers. This means there is higher proportion of intra-repository layer pairs to achieve high similarity. For example, about 28% of intra-repository layers get maximum JCard index more than 0.8, while the proportion decreased to 21% for inter-repository layers. We then calculate the metric difference and its distribution is shown as the figure. Around 68% of the difference of maximum JCard index is non-negative indicating that the highest JCard index is achieved within repositories for these layers. 
In other words, there are 68% of layers can find the most similar layer within its repository. In general, the layers within the same repositories are more similar and have more redundant storage than layers across the repositories. The identical layers that can be shared are limited, while there is high file redundancy and partial layers have high similarity. This provides the possibility to regroup them to create the identical layers, thus maximize the overlap between images towards effective layer sharing. The figure gives a simple example of image reconstruction through file regrouping. We have to answer three questions in the image reconstruction. How many layers are in the reconstructed image? Which layer does each file belong to? And what is the other layer? To answer the questions, there are challenges. First, how many layers in the image affects the operation latency on container files? The operation latency increases with the layer depth according to our measurement. With practical data fitting approach, we present it with a mathematical formula. How to trade off the storage usage against the operation overhead? To this end, we propose the weight operation cost and storage cost to obtain the trade-off. Alpha and beta are the weight parameters. We define the operation cost as the sum operation latency of each layer. And we define the storage cost as the incremental storage of the new unique layer. Second, partial files have dependency, such as the B-point text in the layer 3 is the modification of the one in layer 2. Since the file in the upper layer would cover the one in the lower layer, the file location and layer order would affect the mount view and may cause the image invalid. So how to guarantee the image validity? We propose the commutativity guaranteed constraint to solve this issue. If two files have dependency, we regard them as non-commutative. For this kind of layer pairs, the relative position cannot be changed. For example, the file B-point text in the layer 3 is the modification of the ones in the layer 2. Then the former must be in the upper layer to the latter one. The constraint is formulated as shown in the slide. The image reconstruction is formulated as a mathematical problem now. The objective is to minimize the weight operation cost and storage cost. The constraints are about file consistency and file commutativity. To combine the large amount of metadata, we design the similarity-aware image reconstruction algorithm. The workflow is shown at the slide. We input the metadata of the image requesting for reconstruction. We split the reconstruction problem of the entire image into the file regrouping for each layer and adopt the observation that layers within the same repository are more similar, the algorithm selects target layer only within the repository instead of the whole registry. Thus, the execution time of the algorithm can be significantly reduced. Then, the sharing layer is created with the identical files from the source layer and the target layer, aimed at minimizing the weight cost Finally, the metadata of the reconstructed image is obtained when the algorithm terminates. Next, we present the evaluation of our algorithm. The server we used is equipped with an 8-core Intel Xeon processing running 2.5 GHz with 11 GB of RAM. The images we used are all come from ImageNet. We compare our approach with the following baselines. The greedy offline image reconstruction algorithm iterates all the images and either picks an existing layer in the image or creates a new one to join in. Layered images from Docker Hub are the layers without any adjustment. In one file per layer, each file is stored as a layer and then composed the whole image. We first evaluate the storage and operation overhead. Here we only count the layer number to present the operation overhead. As shown in the figure, the one file per layer achieves the least storage while it performs worse in layer number. The greedy algorithm achieves 1.3% storage saving 
well as the cost of 7.3% increase in their number. The proposed algorithm saves 10% storage and only single digit layers add. We then present the overhead with the variation of the weight matrix alpha and beta. As the increase of the ratio of alpha and beta, the proposed algorithm prefers to make image reconstruction for lower storage. Consequently, we can achieve different trade-offs through adjusting the alpha and beta. We argue that image reconstruction enables to save both storage and traffic resource. The metric related to traffic is absent in the optimization cost, but it can be reduced by enhanced layer sharing. We evaluate the network traffic with different images and clients. With 10 clients and each downloading 15 images, the traffic saving of the proposed is 8.3% compared with the greedy and 8.8% compared with the layers from Docker Hub. The traffic saving increased with the number of download images or the clients. We here evaluate the trade-off of the proposed algorithm and the greedy algorithm. The value of storage cost and operation cost obviously run in the opposite direction. The improvement of storage may lead to the decline of the layer number. The Pareto curve of the greedy algorithm is at the upper right of the curve of our proposed algorithm. This means the proposed achieves less storage consumption than the greedy with the same layer count. Overall, an improved Pareto frontier is formed and better performance is obtained by our proposed algorithm. We finally analyze the reconstruction time. As shown in the left figure, the running time goes through a slight and tolerable increase with the expansion of the image number. The right figure shows the time distribution with the total number of image being 1,250. Around 80% of images have consumed reconstruction time less than 0.05 seconds. It is worth mentioning that our design is easy to scale with more CPU or GPU resource since the reconstruction of each layer is independent. In summary, in this work, we first evaluate the content addressable storage to review the file redundancy. We then define the layer similarity to describe the file redundancy. Quantification and measurement of layer similarity are conducted in the work. Motivated by the similarity, we propose the commutativity guaranteed image reconstruction to explore the potential of layer sharing. Therefore, both storage and network resource consumption can be saved. That's all. Thanks for your listening. Thank you very much. Uh, and the good news is that uh, CC, who is the main author of the, of the paper, is there to answer your questions. Don't hesitate uh, to put them in the chat. Huh? Uh, well, I will start with, my, with one, one question. Uh, one, one thing I, I noticed is something very uh, uh, surprising is that uh, the latency is a linear function of the image image depth. Uh, do you have an idea why why this is so? Or because uh, 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 what I see is that it's an empirical study. Uh, well, uh, it, it is really uh, really impressive to have this very linear thing. Uh, uh, okay, thanks for your question. Um, do, do you mean that why is the uh, operation latency is the linear function of the uh, exactly. image depth? Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess maybe it's because the uh, file operation uh, it, it depends on the file operation of the system. When the container system want to find a file, it would uh, check it from the top of uh, uh, from the top layer of the image to the to the bottom of the image. Uh, it means it, it will check whether the file is in the first layer 
and then the second layer and until it finds the correct uh, right. file. So maybe this is the reason. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, uh, another question I have is, uh, well, usually when you, when you build a, a Docker image with a, with a Docker file, for instance, uh, uh, you say uh, we are doing this operation, that operation, this operation, but not everybody does, uh, you know, Docker commits uh, between the, the different operations. So uh, you finally usually end up with a layer containing multiple operations. And then uh, I, I guess this is what, what causes the, 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 the need to, to, to go in, 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 uh, in, a, uh, in other layer uh, as you are doing this. Uh, the, the, uh, how, how can I can, can I say this? Uh, when you did your your study and your measurement, um, did you take with uh, layers that are usually um, are created by uh, by users or by uh, with uh, layers that are very well known and uh, well separated? Oh, sorry, I didn't uh, understand your question very well. Can you uh, can you pardon? There, there are multiple ways to 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 create layers, yeah, as you say in your in your paper. Um, you can do it uh, with Docker commits uh, for very small operations, and then you have separate layers for each operation, and then you end up with uh, exactly the same layers uh when uh, when you do uh, when you do the same thing uh, or you can put everything in your data, docker file and then oh, yes. uh, uh, you have a very big layer and then you have to go inside the, the layer to say okay this is similar this is not similar right oh uh, yes uh which kind of uh, of work of, of layers did you did you uh, evaluate uh, you mean what kind of layer uh, includes the um, image from the um, Docker commit and or from the Docker file? Mm, exactly. Um, um, uh, actually, I don't. Uh, I didn't. Um, I didn't know about how the developers create them. I just uh, pulled the image from the. Uh, Docker Hub, so it may be from the Docker commit, or it uh, it also can be from the Docker file from the developers. Okay. Well, um, thank you. I have to explain um, a fact that uh, when the when an image is created from the um, Docker file, it is also it is not a huge one layer. It is also depends on the instructions and uh, when it when the image is created from the Docker commit, uh, I didn't um, research the um, details how the image is cr is created from the Docker file. But it is also have um, many layers. It isn't uh, um, it isn't a single layer from the Docker file uh, from the Docker commit. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we are out of time for, uh, for the next question, for, for questions.